Week 16 recap edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. WinBet is now live in Arizona, Colorado, Indiana, Louisiana, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, Tennessee, and Virginia. From boosted same game parlays to live in game odds, WinBet has what you need to win. Sign up today, bet $100, and get a $100 free bet at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash WinBet. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash W Y N N B E T. State restrictions apply. We're also brought to you by our mini helmet contest the sgp mini helmets are now in the store and we're giving one away for free just go to sports gambling podcast.com slash helmet that's sports gambling podcast.com slash helmet Welcome, everyone, to the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean, stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan, real money, Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. Ho, 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 Sean. Merry Christmas. (laughs) See how festive I am? Look at I'm even wearing. Oh, Ryan, rocking the sweet SGP. Let it ride. Sweatshirts available. Store.sportsgamblingpodcast.com. A lot of people think those are great only for Christmas, the Christmas time wrong. They are in style all year round, just like the uh, merch store open 24 seven. What's happening? Uh, How's you your know, Christmas, Ryan? I, I know you don't normally celebrate, but um, the people around you who do celebrate Christmas, did they enjoy it? Well, I mean, at this point, I'm just a guy who carries a tool, tool bag around, putting stuff together, <laughs> putting some chairs together. Uh, new oh, coffee wow. Machine. Chairs. Oh, I mean, they're they're like uh, we're talking about some very robust uh, video game gamer nerd chairs. I guess my kids are fucking nerds mm. getting them gamer chairs. So uh, <laughs> shout out to 2023 year of the Kramer nerd. I saw there was a fellow Kramer rocking some D Gen's only gear out there. A uh, lot, a lot of merry wishes. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. It was a good time. Ki- kids enjoy Christmas, I think, more than adults from what I get. <laughs> Uh, no, you, that you just hate all holidays, Ryan. So any sort of angle where it's like, yeah, no, look, no one enjoys Christmas. No, I, adults enjoy Christmas as well. Okay. Uh, yeah, kids, kids obviously <laughs> like Santa more than adults. I would totally agree to that. I had a uh, great Christmas, ate a bunch of good food, uh, hanging out with my nieces. Uh, only doubt. Well, besides just a brutal week of um, picks, Eagles lost. I did step in dog shit. That was the only downside to my Christmas. Everything else was amazing. Stepping in dog shit is really, it's just a bummer. You got to, uh, you got to hose it off. I'm there with a twig. The The real problem I, I figured out was stepping in dog shit when you're not at your own house. Oh. At my own house, I have other shoes I can change into while I'm cleaning the dog shit shoes. Uh, it's just, it's just not ideal, but everything else food was great. Uh, yeah, just awesome hanging out. We, uh, one of the nieces got a claw machine. So she was just, it's like a kid's claw machine. And, uh, I did catch her later on sticking her arm up through the claw machine. Like, (laughs) wait, no, come on. You can't do that. (laughs) It's her own machine and she's cheating. That's great. It's her own machine. She has. (laughs) unlimited fake quarters to put into it. And she was still like looking around, didn't think anyone was watching her and just put her hand up the claw machine and tried to pull it out. Uh, oh, that I mean, that's, fun. It just shows you kids these days. They, uh, Not, shortest yeah, path to victory is all they care about. Uh, and, and they get their own claw machines. So it's, it's, it's just too easy. Hey, you know what is also easy going to sports gambling podcast.com slash win bet, signing up over at win bet, getting that hundred dollar free win bet, uh, state restrictions apply. But again, we're going to be doing our win, uh, build your own bets at the end of the show for Monday night football. Uh, yeah, same game parlays are so fun. They're a perfect way to enjoy really crappy games. Gave out some first uh, touchdown props for this Sunday night game. Uh, none of them hit because it went chalk, but still, I got a long sweat 
as the first touchdown bled into like halfway through the fourth quarter. So again, even if you don't hit on these, the entertainment value, if you just do a little sprinkle uh, is, is certainly worth it. Sports gambling podcast.com slash win bet sports gambling podcast.com slash win bet uh, restrictions apply. If you or someone, you know, has a gambling problem, one 800 4700 all right, let's get to the recap, plow through that, get to what everyone wants, a.k.a. the Monday night picks. Uh, we have the chat open, so if you want to stuff someone in a locker, feel free to do that. Man, I don't even know who to stuck, stuff in the locker. I guess uh, Dakota Rain Prescott is a good locker category or yeah, uh, yeah, just a good good guy to toss in the locker. He tried to throw the game away. Eagles turnovers ultimately bit him in the ass. But yeah, I'm going to put Dak in that locker. Although I don't want him to stay in the locker too long because I would love Jalen Hurts and the Eagles to see Dak Prescott in the playoffs. So we're not shoving that safety in the locker that Darius Slay threw under the bus after the game? That guy's not going in the locker. <laughs> T.Y. Hilton was washed up three years ago, Sean. Yes. That must have been a horrible play to watch. I, I would imagine that was just as bad as Matt Dodge. Uh, punting to Deshaun Jackson in the Meadowlands. Uh, when I watched that on replay, I was not watching in real time, but when I watched in replay, I was like, holy shit, this is. Well, I oh. one one, it didn't end the game. Two, we had plenty of other opportunities to score. Um, two, our backup quarterback was in. Oh. Uh, three, <laughs> three, we're still most likely going to clinch the number one seed. So it, it doesn't impact our playoff chances uh, like that game did. But I, I appreciate you trying to uh, frame it as a historic loss. The Eagles did lose 40 to 34. No, no, no. Not saying it was a historic loss. It's just a historically bad play. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it was a busted coverage. I don't know who, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you with my film grade on that. But uh, Slay and the safety probably both 50 50 uh, blame there. And yeah. It, Really, honestly, Gardner Minshew, I thought, played a really good game. The two interceptions, I mean, you know, Quez Watkins has to fight for that, those balls a little bit harder. What really did them in was the two fumbles. Now, maybe some of that was in the exchange with Minshew. It wasn't even re- wasn't super clear, uh, the Boston Scott one, if that was on the quarterback or the running back. And then Miles Sanders, back-to-back games with the fumble, uh, you know, first two fumbles all season. So not ideal. That really, to me, I thought was the difference in the game. Yeah, no, I, I mean, n- not to get super deep into this game, but from watching it in uh, in rewind, it did seem like the Eagles probably should have won the game, even with their backup quarterback. And it seems like this Dallas team is just ripe for a. Uh, it's not going to be Tony Romo dropping the extra point, but it might be <laughs> on that level. This this team appears to be the best team in the league for moments, and then they appear to be the Cardinals for moments. So. I don't know. I'm with you. Dak yeah. Dak does not look like a, you know, like the, the common man might think Dak, Hey, he looks like one of the best quarterbacks heading into the playoff. He's looked horrible. The quarterback play from some of these quote studs. has been just trash. Chad is alive. And well, uh, remember when we woke up Chris, Christmas morning, the Broncos were favored over the Rams. Thank you, Santa. Uh, Braden pointing out Eagles almost won with Minshew. You can only imagine what it's going to be like when Hertz is going to come back. Uh, Braden also pointing out that, uh, how their season ended last time with Dak running, uh, with 10 <laughs> seconds and no timeouts. That was, oh man, we can only pray that. that the, uh, the football gods would treat us to another delightful loss like that one. All right, let's get to it. Uh, recap the rest of the week. Jags 19 jets three. I, I don't, Sorry. again, I blame moon off for, uh, I got cute. I, I thought Jags left tackle being out. That would make a difference. Jets defense would, would dominate. And that's certainly how the game started that first drive. And then just Zach Wilson sucking um, just destroyed it. Strebler looked like um, everyone keeps, you know, basically a co- was comparing him to Tebow, like, you know, Tim Tebow, if uh, Tim Tebow stole catalytic converters, like he just lo- does look like a squirrely, you know, wrong side of the tracks, Tim Tebow. Uh, I mean, is Zach Wilson going to be on an NFL team next year? Seriously, uh, that's going to be tough. Yeah, I definitely think. Honestly, I wouldn't be shocked if, um, let's say, Minshew gets a good deal somewhere else. I wouldn't be surprised if the Eagles bring him in uh, as a uh, backup quarterback. Dude, 
he's not a quarterback in the NFL. He played at BYU. I think like this is uh, he had Joe Theismann in his corner. I I will be surprised. I'll say this: he won't be on the Jets next year. I will be oh, yeah. maybe maybe the Panthers. They seem to like former Jets quarterbacks. He can back up. Darnold. No, dude, he was you know he was the number two pick overall. Someone is going to talk them you know talk themselves into signing him. No, oh, you're right. I mean Baker Mayfield's been on like three teams this year, and he was yeah Baker Mayfield starting. Like, come on, he's definitely going to be in the league. Uh, Ravens seventeen, Falcons nine. This should have been a lock uh, even without. Lamar Jackson. I know it got kind of close, but Falcons offense on the road is just so bad with Ritter. Not that the Ravens look good. The Ravens look pretty rough as well. What do you mean? Should have been a lock. I did lock it up, Sean. Thank you for, no, for noticing. Yeah. I mean, it got a little dicey there at the end. We had some of that weird, like backdoor math happening where I was like, holy shit, they're going to get the touchdown because they're down two scores. Fortunately, the Ravens defense bowed up multiple times, and then they ended up settling for the field goal to cut it to eight. So even with the bad number in my pocket, Sean came home with the lock. Hell yeah. Uh, Panthers 77 or sorry, 37 Lions 23. I, I said the Panthers were just going to, you know, the only thing they can do is run the ball, run the ball. Well, I Chuba Hubbard. I was annoyed because at first it seemed like Chuba Hubbard was going to be getting all the work. And I was like, what about Deonta Foreman? What's going on? They both had a hundred yards in the first half. This was the lions team uh, that we expected to see against the jets. Uh, Zach Wilson, obviously, you know, made that a different game, but again, lions can't go on the road and play defense, especially on a back-to-back spot. Well, we should update everyone. Jared Goff now 0 and 4 when in freezing temperatures. <laughs> Sam Darnold now 2 and 2 in sub uh, 32 degree temperatures. So watch out for and Sam Darnold looking with some wiggle running the ball. I mean, I, look, I watched the Bucks tonight and I watched the Panthers uh, against the Lions. The Panthers are a better football team right now. They, I, I really hope the Panthers get in the playoffs. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, the whole Brady thing is interesting. I just really. I mean, if you're, you know, as a Giants fan, Eagles fan, who would you rather the Cowboys have to square off this Panthers team or the Bucks team? I mean, the Bucks just look so bad. I guess there's always the Brady element and and it's a one game sample. And I'd probably rather have Brady at home than Sam Darnold at home. But there is that element of like, are we going to get a a repeat of that Saints Seahawks game where we're going to get a 10 point home dog? We're going to have a nobody believes in us, and we're just going to have some sort of epic, epic tilt in, in Charlotte. Uh, I'm, I, look, that's a Chuba, way more exciting. Chuba Hubbard, Chuba Hubbard, Beast Quake, is that what you're predicting? Or, or Foreman, Deontay Foreman. He's a big dude. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't mind that. I mean, uh, who the knows? City, Chuba Hubbard. Yeah. I, I, have, I actually have a, a take here. Uh, si- Ch- Chuba Hubbard, since Matt Rule and his wife left town, seems like he's had a little bit more time to focus on football. Maybe he's not more out there beside in massaging the what the Matt rules wife's foot uh, feet or whatever he was into uh, which got him on the team in the first place but yeah I mean I certainly want to see that I, I can't watch this Bucks team in the playoffs they're gonna get they're destroyed just, by someone it, it's like a, such a tough watch do you remember the scene from Jackass where Johnny Knoxville is dressed up as old man like grandpa Johnny Knoxville and then he, he's like in San Francisco in the wheelchair and he just starts rolling down a massive hill <laughs> to me that's Tom Brady right now we're just waiting for the hit we're waiting for the ambulance and, and the curtain to come out and put him down once and for all. Chiefs 24, Seahawks 10. I, I love the Seahawks getting a bunch of points here. Had some chances to backdoor it. They just couldn't. I, I was shocked that they couldn't get anything going with their offense without Tyler Lockett going. He's just, he's such a difference maker. Maybe it was the cold weather. Kenneth Walker couldn't really get the running game going. And I, I didn't think the Chiefs defense looked particularly good. Although I guess Kenneth Walker did. I, I, I looked at his numbers 26 for one Oh seven. I guess he just no touchdowns. Didn't seem to have like a, um, I, I don't know any sort of big plays to really jumpstart them, but uh, no Tyler Lockett just couldn't get any points. I mean, if you hold the chiefs to 24 and you're getting 10 points, man, you like your chances, but couldn't get the cover. Yeah, I mean, it was a fun slate to watch. Uh, I was in the studio by myself, sweating out some, uh, and I'll, I'll quick aside, because the way these early games started, uh, I'm in the FFPC main event, hunting down a million dollars, and every single one of my guys was scoring touchdowns earlier. I got as high as number four, Sean. 
See, I'm, oh, I'm wow. down back to like 50th, so it's it's not that exciting. I've kind of shit the bed the rest of the time. But this game particularly, and, and some of the action, it like Kenneth Walker, they forgot about him early in the game. His stats were empty because he picked up a lot in the second half. I also think like, Geno Smith as a pro bowler, may, we need to maybe undo it. There were multiple throws <laughs> in this game where Geno Smith... He looks Smith really cho- bad, yeah. Well, he, here's the thing. It looks good when you're completing it. Maybe Tyler Lockett helps you do that. But when you're when you're opting out of rushing four yards for a first down against the Chiefs to throw it 25 yards downfield to a guy in double coverage, it makes me wonder where your head's at. And it makes me wonder if he's back to thinking about all those people that wrote him off. Because, I mean, talk about a, a, a season arc. I, he's in the Pro Bowl. Like he's not a Pro Bowl quarterback right now. I'll say no, that, Sean. No. This is the old Geno Smith. Well, so is, I, I so wonder is, if he's even going to get a contract next year. Yeah, he'll definitely get a contract. But um, I mean, certainly the the numbers going way way down. I think they'll. I think the Seahawks will sign him to like those two year, you know, twenty million kind of. Hey, we're going to draft someone. You're not our guy, but we want a competent starter contracts. Uh, Jordan Herbert checking in saying as a Seahawks fan, it's been more fun rooting against the Broncos than rooting for the Seahawks this year. Yeah. Especially lately. Um, yeah. He's just completely fallen off. Although the, the rust collapse has been enjoyable to watch Saints 17 Browns 10 again, Browns are horrible. I, I don't know how they won those games. They won it. And the Saints aren't much better. This was a just all-time ugly game. Dalton, 92 passing yards. Uh, we did get the Taysom Hill anytime touchdown. Almost got the second anytime touchdown. Uh, couldn't get that one. I, they ended up, like, kicking a field goal on, like, the second, fourth and two. Like, why would you do that in this game? Taysom Hill did have nine for 56 for a touchdown. Uh, again, just pretty ugly game top to bottom. Deshaun Watson, 15 for 31. I, I just don't – yeah, I don't know what you do with Deshaun Watson. I mean, I guess you just talk yourself into the idea that, hey, he's got no experience or he's so rusty, but it's looked bad. Not every above-average quarterback deserves a big contract. I think we're learning two things this season. One, all this coaching turnover, we've got a, sh- a, a whole bunch of shitty NFL football coaches. And I think you have the same thing with quarterbacks, and I think Cleveland is the convergence of both. And so, you know, I, I was watching this game – and the wife's like, wow, isn't New Orleans a dome team? Like, that was that was a comment I had with the wife. Yeah. Like, why are they losing? How are, how are the Browns losing in bad weather to the Saints? I mean, if I was a Browns fan, I would have some serious, serious concerns. Because Deshaun Watts, it's not that he looks rusty or looks bad. He just doesn't look like any – no one's playing for him. No one wants to play for this dude. And it's like, no. I don't know how you get out of this situation. I don't know how you, re- J- you know, Jacoby Brissett, like when he was in there, guys were playing for him, oh, yeah. you know, like when he randomly came in and did a QB sneak, he does like the, he's the QB sneak specialist. And then like right after he gets the first down, like guys are high fiving him on the way out. Like it, it's, a, it's like the Mike white, uh, Zach Wilson thing, J- Jimmy G vibes, right? Like it's that yeah. whole like this, this is a guy we want to play for. Like he's a good teammate. He cares about us. And, and Deshaun Watson, just a piece of shit, clearly a sociopath. If football players can't connect with you, you must be some kind of individual. <laughs> uh, Bengals 22 Patriots 18. Oh man. This must've been, this must've just, this game must've just been so painful for Boston capper because he texted us like, Hey, uh, dudes, put everything you got on uh, Bengals minus three, minus 120, minus three and a half. And then Bengals get out to a 22 nothing lead. He's like, oh, yeah, I knew it. I knew it. Uh, Patriots suck. Yeah, fucking Matt Patricia. And then the Patriots almost have a miraculous comeback and then come up short. This was so I was driving up to uh, the in laws, listening to this game oh. on the uh, serious version of Red Zone, which is great because you'll cut in at like the local feed. So you got to hear Scott Zolak, the uh, Patriots. Uh, if you've never heard Scott Zolak, he is like a maniac. Uh, like just, he's a color commentator guy who will just go, come on, let's go. Let's go. And like during the broadcast, he was losing his mind. He kept go. He kept going big drive for Matt Patricia here. Big drive. And they eventually just completely collapse. Uh, so, yeah, Bengals lucky to hang on to that one. But uh, Pat's pretty, pretty bad, too. 
Uh, this was an interesting game, and I, I don't think I got around to put it out, but this Patriots defense has now made the halftime ad- three straight weeks. They make halftime adjustments. The other team barely scores, including that Raiders game. Obviously, I'm going to throw out the Chandler Jones touchdown. The, the Patriots defense has only given up seven second half points in three games. Yeah. Shutting out the Bengals, shutting out the Cardinals, and giving up a touch a late touchdown to Derek Carr before shit really unraveled. Clearly, they're doing everything right on the defensive ball when it comes to the adjustments. But this offense, it's almost like the Tom Brady offense where they're doing something, and it's like it has to fail in the game for then Mac Jones to be like, what the fuck? And then they just start slinging it around, and somehow they're able to move the ball. They got a little lucky with like a batted back uh, Hail Mary mm-hmm. type play. On, a, on an equally long, like, third and 27 or something like that. But I, I don't know. My, my take on, on this Patriots team is I certainly – I would not want to face the Patriots in the playoffs. I, I know their offense is not trustworthy, but that defense, the way that they can adjust and shut anyone down, it's impressive. And um, God damn, if, if T. Higgins only got one more touch. Uh, Sean, we'll get to it later, but the, the best ball sweat that I I'm, – unfortunately, I'm out of best ball mania – uh, no thanks to Tom Brady, that little bitch. But boy, I could have used that, that one, uh, that that touchdown. If T. Higgins gets in, like I basically, I'm getting knocked out by like ten points. T. Higgins scores that touchdown, and Tom Brady doesn't completely suck. I might be uh, playing for a million. Well, Ryan, you know. It's, uh, it's it's about the journey along the way. Yeah. Um, Chad is obviously both out on Mac and to uh, uh, throwing them in there. I I did think Zappy brought him a little heat, a little energy. Maybe they maybe they switch back to Zappy at some point. Vikings twenty seven, Giants twenty four. Oh man, you could have seen this coming a mile away of the Giants covering this game and not winning. Uh, Vikings hit a sixty one yarder to win the game back to back walk off game winning field goals. It's, it's crazy. Like when does this ride run out for Minnesota? So the, the giants are now eight and three, eight, three and one in one score games. The Vikings are now 11 and Oh, uh, watching this game. You know, if I was a commander's fan, I'd probably be complaining about some bad calls. Uh, (laughs) if I was, uh, my normal set, I would be telling you like, man, these, Richie James, once again, dropping critical passes, uh, turns into be the pro, but it, it, like you said, this was always going to be the game. It was going to be a close game. And at the end of the day, like it sucks to lose in a game where the giants got a bunch of unfortunate bounces. And then they also lose on a 61 yard field goal. The positive here, Dan, Dan Jones. I mean, we're talking about a lot of bad quarterbacks in the NFL, Sean, and even yeah. you, it's hard to it's hard to pick him up. If you watch, I'm sure you didn't catch a lot of this game, but if you go back and watch the film of this game, once again, I know weak defense, but the reason the Giants were in this game at all was Dan Jones. Saquon Barkley. And Saquon Barkley. They both played well. I mean, but Isaiah Hodges, practice squad guy, they claimed him off the street like two months ago. He's putting up a big game. So, so your, I, your, your theory is that if Daniel Jones gets better receivers, he'll be good. Sean, you're just you're just a hater if you're not watching Dan Jones and you think he's a good quarterback at this point. Like, like, uh, find the give me the argument. It's not turnovers this year. What what's the argument? Is it just purely counting stats? I'll give you that. That's probably the coaching staff being a little conservative. But I mean, he's ne- he has not cost them a single game this year. If anything, you could say he played poorly in that Titans game. But he has been the reason they've won more than the reason they've lost by a mile. It's not even close. And when you look around the league. Find me. I mean, I can easily list off 10 to 15 quarterbacks that are worse than Dan Jones right now and have much better talent around him. So he's so you want to sign him to a long term contract, five year, 200 million or like, you know, no, whatever, but, that, but that's the, you're not even listening to the show, Sean. I'm saying like none of that. I'm listening needs to, to the show. None of that needs to happen. He's not going to sign to a big year deal. I mean, if he wants that, he's going to get franchised. If he's reasonable and understands that Brian Dable is the best thing for him, maybe we get some sort of discounted three-year deal. I would be very shocked to see a massive like franchise quarterback five-year deal. So you don't think he's a franchise quarterback? Oh, what are you talking about? You're like a lawyer right now. This is bad. This is a bad take. I think he's a franchise quarterback. I don't think he's earned like a Deshaun Watson contract. And if you okay. were listening to the show earlier, I think a lot I've been of con- listening to the show the entire I think a time. lot of quarterbacks don't like I think what's happened with the quarterback market recently with Kyler, with Deshaun, will impact the mid tier. 
obviously there's still the elite of the elite that are going to get those top dollar contracts. I don't think you're going to be seeing marginal guys getting that. And so I think Dan Jones, I think there's a very good possibility. Dan Jones meets in the middle and they get something that's, that's not a crazy contract and not super long. Okay. I mean, again, yeah. if you want, uh, tell me, tell me who, like, tell me, fifth, tell me 10 quarterbacks that play better. This any, year. I didn't even say anything about Dan Jones. I mentioned it. I didn't say he sucked. I didn't say anything. You're the one who's you did. super defense. What did I say? You said, said, Oh, you, you think he's a franchise quarterback? Obviously, I yeah, think he's a franchise quarterback if I want them to re sign him. Uh, okay. I'm just telling right. you, he's not going to sign. They're, he's not worth. He has not earned a five-year, two hundred million dollar, two hundred fifty million dollar contract. That's all, because that you're saying that for effect, because you don't think he's worth that. And what I'm saying is, I don't think he's going to get paid that, but I think he's going to get a decent deal. Okay, congrats. And and, and I congrats again, to Dan make Jones. me the list. Make me the list. Where does he fall on the top quarterbacks this year? Where does he fall on the list of of quarterbacks in the NFL right now? Better better right, than Tom Brady. To- Okay. You no, know, there's a lot of bad quarterbacks. Uh, and so I think it, by that standard, yeah, he's looking better than previous years. And he looks, he looks better th- in the, in the Brian Dable offense. I still Completion don't think percentage over expectation. Find me a metric. He shows up nicely in it. I, I just, I don't think you're paying attention. What do you mean? What do you mean? I'm not paying attention. I've watched every one of his games. Okay. It, I don't think he's, I don't think he's a great quarterback. Okay. He is this year. You think he's great that you would use that as having a great year. They're going to make the playoffs with a bunch of fucking practice squad scrubs. <laughs> okay. I, if, all right. If the Eagles were doing this, you, you would, you would be t- speaking very highly of the quarterback for what they're doing with not much around them. That's all I'd say. Yeah. I mean, last year, Jalen, uh, the difference is I think what year is Dan Jones in fourth, fourth, yeah, I think we've kind of seen what he is. Maybe, maybe this is you know, maybe he's building to something better. I don't, I don't see him being a guy you win a Super Bowl with. Okay. I got nothing. I, to, if that's where you're going with it, I got nothing else to add. No, like to me, he's not a he's not a franchise quarterback. I think two of those years I, were with Jason Garrett, dude. Like, come on. Okay, context is I, important. Okay, I don't think he's a franchise quarterback. I don't think the Giants think he's a franchise quarterback. I think they're going to be in the quarterback market next year. Oh, I'll make that bet right now. Dan Jones will be back with the team. Oh, yeah. I think he'll be back in the team, but I think they'll also consider other options. Okay. Dan Jones, Tyrod Taylor will be the two quarterbacks on the team next year. All right. And they won't, they won't win the Super Bowl. I don't know what to tell you. I don't think he's, I don't think he's. Hey, Adi, clip uh, this for me so I can save it for next year. <laughs> I didn't, I said, they're going to be looking around for other quarterback options. I think they will. I think they'll consider other options. Okay. Gino Smith, Dan Jones. Who do you want on your team next year? No, uh, Dan Jones. Yeah. Okay. That was a different narrative early in the season. So a lot of things have changed. <laughs> Yeah, Geno Smith has gotten way worse. Dan Jones gotten is way a guy, better. Great point. I wouldn't say that, but sure, right? Okay. He's great. Dan Jones is great. Thank you. <laughs> great win. But, oh, they lost. All right. Uh, Bills thirty-five, Bears thirteen. Uh, is it weird to say we got backdoored by this many points? <laughs> No, I mean, like the bears were live the entire time. Uh, those last two touchdowns, things kind of got unhinged, but you know, Josh Allen, two interceptions. I don't know. The bears bears suck. That's the problem, yeah. but boy, they were in this game. They should have, co- they definitely should have covered the spread. Um, not bitter, but it did feel like the, how do you lead the game at halftime? I just, I don't know. I mean, I get it. Bears fans, you came at me because Justin Fields is playing better. He's decent fantasy quarterback. But uh, Sean, correct me if I'm wrong. Is my three and 14 prediction still alive? Yeah, they only have three wins. Still alive. Let's go. And by the way, there's some disgusting acts going on in the chat right now. Noted Eagles fan uh, D Bettis is is turning into a a DAC, (laughs) a DAC guy. I mean, where, where are your if you're willing to go that low, you can see yourself out of here, bro, buddy. Now, who would you rather have, Ryan? Justin Fields or Dan Jones? Are you serious? That's an yeah. insulting question. 
to, Justin, to Fields, Justin Fields? Justin Fields can't play quarterback. He can play running back. He's a great athlete. Love to see what he does. But anytime he has to make a read or throw a pass, he looks horrible. This game particularly. If Justin Fields was Dan Jones in this game, oh, well, Bears definitely cover the spread. His throws are fucking horrible. Like, he, he's a one-dimensional quarterback with, a, with great arm strength, but he doesn't know how to use it. it he, he's got a huge dong, but he doesn't know how to use it, Sean. Texans, 19, Titans, 14. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, how did the Titans lose this game? <laughs> it's insane. Uh, you know, flow chart, Sean. Yeah. Uh, Derek Henry, pretty good game. 23, 126. Malik Willis. You're just getting nothing with him. I mean, I don't, I, how, how they haven't schemed up any sort of passing offense is insane. Malik Willis, like, I know he was fun to watch in college, but it's looking like he might not ever come close to playing in the NFL. He, he just can't throw the ball. He can't throw a football on an NFL field. All of that being said, dude, the, the Texans were hot for this game. Lovey Smith has this team motivated every week, and somehow they got there. Yeah, I thought this would be a letdown game for them because they kind of – gone all out the past couple of games, but they still seem to be playing hard for him. They still seem to be running this two quarterback system. We still can't get a Dre Jeff Driscoll anytime touchdown uh, prop from any book because you know that one's coming. Cowards. And, and uh, um, Br Brandon Cooks had another like big touchdown that was called back as well. A little, little bit of a, a, a shifty call. So like it, it wasn't like the Texans got lucky here. I think we're just going to have to come to grips with the fact that the Jags are in the playoffs. <laughs> Yeah, it's certainly looking that way. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, uh, AFC South really sucks. The Texans Both really could have had it. What's up? Yeah. Both South divisions fucking suck. Commanders 20, 49ers 37. Uh, could be the end of the Taylor Heineke era. They're they're considering bringing uh, – oh, they, they did bring in Carson Wentz there for a while. I don't know. What's your take, Ryan? I mean, I thought I thought the I thought the commander's defense would be able to slow down Purdy and the offense a little bit uh, for the 49ers. But Kittle Kittle has been really the guy benefiting most from the switch to Purdy. Uh, he had a great game. Obviously, that Ray Ray McLeod 70 yard 71 yard run um, massively affected the game. It allowed Brock Purdy to once again play with that positive great game script. So. Uh, again, I, I'm very. I'll be very curious to see what this team looks like when someone actually challenges them. Because Brock Purdy, Brock Purdy looks good, but I don't know if he's he's lighting the world on fire. He's just he's running the offense, game manager, or whatever they call it. Yeah, but I mean, 37 points. Uh, commanders just really suck. They're falling off here pretty hard. Uh, Steelers 13, Raiders 10. Super, super ugly game. Of course, the Raiders figure out a way to lose in heartbreaking fashion. Should have locked this one up, but I just always find myself locking up the Steelers and the six and two now with TJ Watt. Uh, they're just such a different team. And man, if they would have had TJ Watt their entire season and maybe started Kenny Pickett from the beginning, I don't know. Maybe they had a chance to win the AFC North. I feel like we're not that far off from that. Uh, I mean, I, I don't think Kenny Pickett's great, but I, I'm with you. Like Trubisky wasn't the right right call, and so maybe they were just being smart. But ah, uh, this is like uh, they were honoring Franco Harris. Like this was never going to be a Raiders victory, ever. Um, no. So yeah, I mean, this is just the, the the Raiders doing what they do. Patrick Graham and that defense giving up another lead, sitting back and giving up another. Boy, you know what? Not to talk about the Giants again, but boy, do I like oh. having a defensive coordinator that takes chances. Patrick Graham is a fucking pussy. He sits back and he's given up lead after lead after lead. It's it's disgusting. If not for that game last week too, like come on, it's just, this Raiders team is cooked. And you know what's going to happen, Sean? We're going to be previewing them in the summer, and we're going to talk about how they're like two and eight and one score games, and the regression candidate, and blah blah blah. I already wrote it down to remind us: no, not a regression candidate. This team is losing for a reason. Packers 26, Dolphins 20. My initial theory of two is sucking, playing out. Um, Mike McDaniel, 
I call the millennial uh, Chip Kelly, which really seems to fit. Like he just schemed dudes wide open, and that was working for Tua. And now, now that you know teams have some tape on him, they're figuring him out. I mean, how do you lose? It? How are you not able to put up more than twenty points at home against this Packers defense? This Packers defense isn't that good. I mean, they had no points in the second half at home in a must-win game. Well, it, it, is it is this going to be a trend? Are we going to start seeing teams being able to adjust to this gimmicky offense? And honestly, like the way the game ended, I don't know if you saw the game clinching interception, but yeah, it was just mm, nah, to a to a T. Just no one in the area. Like, what? Where are you throwing that, bro? Rams 51 Broncos 14. You know, I tried to say, I can't take the Broncos as a non-conference road favorite. Let's talk out of that. Uh, let's talk into the Broncos Rams Rams put up 51 points on Russell Wilson. Oh man. The Rams are playing hard here at the end in LA. I think everywhere else they're an auto fade, but in LA Judy still had a good game six for one seventeen. but Baker man, two touchdowns, both to, uh, Tyler Higby, Cam Akers going off. I mean, I, for Baker Mayfield to be responsible for a 50 point game this weekend, and for that, so hey, like Broncos defense, that's embarrassing. But what, what's going on with Russ? Did you, did you see the video on the sideline, Sean? The offensive line is arguing with Brett Rippon, who's trying to defend Russ. It sounds like <laughs> it's just. It seems it almost was, like he, Brett Rippon went to them and said, you guys need to start blocking like as if they're not blocking hard because Russ is a fucking weirdo. Uh, I don't know how to, he looks horrible. This is not the same guy that we fell in love with Sean. And it's, 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 it's amazing how far he's fallen. He, I don't, I mean, if he not for the contract, he shouldn't be starting in the NFL. No. It, and if I was the Broncos, I would, I would almost get rid of uh, Russell Wilson before Nathaniel Hackett. I, I almost feel bad for Nathaniel Hackett. Uh, Cause it's just so obvious. It's all Russ's fault. And you just see Nathaniel Hackett is just life is falling apart on Christmas on national TV. And he's just like staring out into the, into the game. And Oh man, it was a total shit show. Sean, who says uh, no Russ for Deshaun Watson straight up. Who says no? I think the Browns. Yeah, I think the Browns 100%. I yeah. mean, Deshaun Watson's sure? looked better. Yeah, Deshaun Watson's looked better than Russell Wilson. And he's looked really bad. Mm-hmm. I've at least seen Deshaun Watson have a couple throws that are like, granted, it was like across the body and like not decisions, but at least you can see like, all right. Or also, he's had a couple of nice runs where you're like, okay, this guy is still athletic. He doesn't really look like a quarterback. Um, but I still understand, like, I don't know. There's something there. Russell Wilson. There's just nothing left. It's sad. Uh, Buccaneers 19 Cardinals 16 super ugly game. Uh, I don't know. What, I don't know what to make of this, uh, character known as Tom Brady. They've just, they've just completely fallen apart. Trace McSorley. I mean, by the way, did you see Trace McSorley's dad in the crowd? Guy looks fucking intense, Sean. He's oh. the, the, the announcers I were like, I, I showed that I saw that they kept showing that dude with the complete head shaved. And I go, I oh, must be related to someone. Oh, it was Trace McSorley's dad. The, the crew was like, oh, yeah, he really uh, apparently he like he, he used to like move around a lot because he, he wears his emotions on his sleeve and he gets real intense at games. But he's like, I'm just going to try to sit in my seat like that, there was a whole segment about how he was just going to try to sit in his seat. It sounds like me at a youth sporting event. Um, very intense. I just, you know, it kind of played out like I, I gave my contrarian take on this game was like, uh Oh, you know, what if JJ Watt just destroys the interior of this offensive line and makes it difficult. And once again, like somehow they saved the good plays of the fourth quarter and they figure it out. But the connection between Mike Evans and Tom Brady looks horrible right now. No, uh, he Brady, doesn't seem those to deep tr- balls. Doesn't seem to trust, uh, the tight ends like he normally does. Uh, it's just like if it was anyone, I mean, all he does is check down to the running back. It's, it's pathetic. Yeah. I mean, Leonard Fournette probably won. Uh, I'm sure the guy who had the Millie maker had Leonard Fournette. I mean, he had, he had nine catches. That's insane. Uh, not super efficient. Looked pretty bad, but yeah. What are you going to do? All Great right. Game. 
yeah, enough about those games. Let's talk about Monday night football Colts chargers. Ryan, what's your first prop? Uh, well, and, and real quick before I throw it out, I forgot to mention that our hero, Aaron Rodgers, has stayed alive in the playoffs. Now, Sean, you wouldn't believe it. His chances to make the playoffs have gone up to almost 40%. If the commanders lose out and the Packers win out, the Packers are in the playoffs. That's all that has to happen. First prop, Nick Foles, under 229 and a half passing yards. I'm sorry, Sean. I know he's, uh, he's, a, he's a friend of yours. A uh, close personal friend, but would you believe it if I told you the uh, the Colts have averaged passing for 214 yards per game this year, and over the last three, it's 184. Uh, if they're going to have success, it's on the ground in this one. I don't think Nick Foles is going to have a great game slinging the rock. I, again, quote, I don't really know what this offense is trying to do from the words of Big Dick Nick himself. So let me fade that under 229 and a half passing yards. Um, yeah, I'm over, over 229 and a half passing yards, right? I mean, Nick Foles in a dome, they have no running game, even regardless of how you think this is going to shake out. He's going, he's going to get some easy stuff. Um, yeah, no, I mean, Nick Foles in a dome. That's all. That's the entire handicap and against this chargers defense, like this chargers defense is not good. They're very susceptible to the pass. And Nick Foles is is nothing to lose. They're out of the playoffs. He's just playing for his NFL career. Uh, I love Nick Foles in this spot over two twenty nine and a half. Just so you remember what happened last time, we went in opposite directions on a, a over under on a passing yard prop in a prime time game. Just just so we're on the same page. Anyway, yeah, one was Zach Wilson, right? Well, I mean, Nick, Nick Foles hasn't been playing for a reason, I think. All right. Uh, second one for me. Man, I, re I really wanted to find a – I mean, how do you not just take Austin Eckler to go over four and a half receptions? Uh, it, maybe, it, maybe it's chalky. Uh, it just seems like that when they need to do stuff, and it's it, it, it just dump it off, dump it off. I think specifically this Colts team, uh, they've struggled their bottom half team in DBOA against the running back in the passing game. Uh and, it, and we're not paying this crazy, like, five and a half, six and a half price here. So give me Austin Eckler over four and a half. Yeah. Uh, for me, this is a big part of the handicap, but uh, give me Mo Alley Cox over receiving yards. As you know, Ryan, um, Nick Foles at his heart is a basketball player. He said that number of times that he, he doesn't really consider himself a football player. He <laughs> considers himself more of a basketball player. You know who else is a basketball player? Who's that? Mo Ali Cox Nice. played for VCU. Uh, so I love the uh, basketball to basketball connection. Nick Foles loves throwing uh, jump ball passes. This is the, it's going to go to Mo Alley Cox all day. Love it. All right. I like that. And I actually have a pro. I have a pro uh, Colts take here. My last one. Yeah. Are we still, are we still, uh, is Nick Foles still into the Lord? Yes. Mm. You remember what we learned through Carson Wentz, Michael Pittman also into the Lord. Okay. Mm. Michael Pittman. I'm going to do an alt line here. Michael Pittman to have a hundred yards. This is a tiny bit of a hedge against my previous bet, but it's three and a half to one, Sean. So I'm I'm uh I'm taking a stab on this one because I, I think there's a world where he could see a shitload of targets. I got scared off by the six and a half receptions because that seemed a little high from Pittman. Uh, maybe there's a five and a half out there. We can play that instead. But I'm gonna do an alt line just for fun here. 100 yards plus 330. Hmm. All right. Uh, this one for me, really, I love this guy. XFL, USFL legend. I don't know. I'm not really going to figure. I'm not going to look back and see which one he was in. But Donald Parham, uh, they really liked in the goal uh, in the red zone area. He uh, was out for a while, hadn't played since mid October, came back last game, uh, out snapped Trey McKitty, who was getting a ton of looks, uh, almost out snapped uh, their Gerald Everett. They don't like Gerald Everett in the red zone. Donald Parham had three targets, three catches 
uh, for 45 yards last time. I think Donald Parham anytime touchdown plus 750. Love that. So give me Donald Parham anytime touchdown plus 750. Is that his price for anytime touchdown? Wow. Yeah, isn't that insane? Uh, oh, I absolutely love that. I mean, I, I, I he's on my first touchdown card, and the price does not match that beautiful number. I might have to play the anytime at 750. Yeah, I'm staring. Right. I've looked at it a number of times, but yeah. All right. Well, uh, first touchdown. Give me Parham 35 to one. Yep. Uh, to everything you said, he, he, he's a big red zone guy. Uh, we've certainly been a big fan of his all the way back to the XFL day, Sean. Uh, you, you were right the first time. Uh, also going to take the Chargers defense at 25 to one. There's a chance Nick Foles gets popped, like nice little uh, sack fumble return. Feel, feel I, I can see that in his tall, lanky basketball frame. And then give me Michael Pittman again, uh, Bible narrative, eleven to one. And Deion Jackson, I the, the difference between Deion Jackson and Zach Zach Moss is like eight to one. Deion Jackson's like sixteen to one. That I know Zach Moss is most likely going to be the goal line guy, but I do think Deion Jackson is someone they trust more in the passing game. So. I uh, was a little shocked to see the p- disparity in price here. So give me uh, Deion, the Michael Pittman, 11 to one, Deion Jackson, 16 to one, and then Chargers defense, 25 to one, Parham, 35 to one. Okay. Uh, yeah. Parham, 35 to one, uh, Deandre Carter, 28 to one. We almost hit that uh, last time the Chargers were in prime time. He, they ran a, it was like fourth and goal. They ran a bubble screen to him. They, he's definitely a guy. They draw up stuff uh, near the red zone, near the goal line. And then uh, Mo Ali Cox, obviously 28 to one, got to throw him in there. Um, I'm debating this last. So wh- who did you have for you? had You had uh Deion Jackson and Michael Pittman. Yeah. I mean, you, you got to throw Mo Ali Cox in there, right? Yeah, Mo Ali Cox is in there. I'm just thinking who who do I like for my second? Um Jelani Woods is a guy they've been getting involved in a lot. System play. Play two tight ends, man. Well, who's their other tight end? Jelani Woods. Oh, Jelani Woods, yeah. Uh yeah, you're right. I'll go Jelani Woods twenty two to one. I was gonna say, don't overthink it, dude. <laughs> Uh, all right, what time to fire up your sports gambling podcast.com slash win bet where you can build your own bet. Again, uh, get your get that hundred dollar free bet if you're in a state that has that going on. Ryan, what is your uh, free bet? Free bet. Uh, well, I did build a bet, and you, you well, yeah, really assuming, yeah. assuming, assuming you know you're a first time customer at win bet in participating states you're betting a hundred dollars you're getting a hundred dollar free bet you use it on something like this right oh 100 i mean if there's one thing i've learned from scott reichel save all your free bets for the crazy shit but first time we met up with him in vegas and he's like i've been saving this free bet for for eight months and i just got down <laughs> on a same game parlay absolutely love that stuff all right chargers to win by 13 and a half Donald Parham to score a touchdown and all, all we need Mr. Michael Pittman to do. Uh, like I said earlier, I, I couldn't find uh, the hundred. You know what? Actually, let's make it simpler. Parham touchdown, Pittman touchdown, Chargers minus 13 and a half. That's going to pay you a hundred to one. Wow. hundred to one. All right. I'm sitting at 90 to one. That's all um, right yeah. I'm just looking at some headlines. Nick Foles using basketball to make uh, NFL Super Bowl run. Nick Foles nails long three pointer. Nick Foles, a basketball star. He was just drop step dunking on the hoop uh, before the uh, the Patriots game. This guy loves other basketball players. Mo Alley Cox, two touchdowns. Colts money line, ninety to one. What's fun? I mean, Sean, I think you could. I mean, six seven. It's that doesn't take much to dunk. No, doesn't take much to throw two tight uh, touchdowns to your fellow basketball star Mo Ali Cox. Also, there's the narrative of just like two guys with giant schlongs hooking up. You know, two true well, alphas. No, I mean, right? You just assume we haven't gotten confirmation about Mo Ali Cox. I mean, one could guess. He has Cox in his last name, uh, and he's a giant dude. But yeah, hey. <laughs> we, oh, I we, mean, you know, we're not going to report that officially. Yeah, 
I mean, everyone knows that Sean Bradley had a small dick. I mean, you know, big guys don't always have huge dicks, but Mo Alley Cox, mm. if he didn't, I mean, we got to adjust the last name or something. All right. Hey, uh, make sure you get in on the mini helmets. Ryan, uh, we're getting the reviews are in. Of course, uh, if you have not, uh, sportsgamingpodcast.com slash helmet. Encouraging people to leave their favorite review uh, so far in uh, the favorite review or favorite moment from the Sports Gambling Podcast in 2022. We got a great one. Uh, Ryan, you want to read it? Yeah, shout out to uh, to Nagels, which a little bit of slander in here uh, for, uh, on me. I don't quite understand it. He is a, a grumpy gentleman, but uh, title helmet five stars. I want a helmet. I was promised a helmet many months ago, much like Kramer not paying back his buy in to a <laughs> poker game, which I, I don't even. Was there a story? I, I That doesn't seem like something I would do. Uh, no, I have no, not you got my helmet yet. I will submit five stars. I will write a review. I will continue to contribute to the golf gambling podcast. Parentheses if asked. That feels a little passive aggressive. Maybe him and Cat are fighting. And I will patiently wait for my helmet. LFG. Bang, bang. I mean, he did leave a five star, so he is yeah. entered for the contest. So maybe that's he how is, he can help it. He is officially entered. Get your entry in sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash helmet. Uh, for Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean, stacking the money green, and he is Ryan. Uh, great job. Great job, Sean. Have, uh, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Kramer. Let it.